and welcome to the Caregiver Stories podcast, where we discuss all types of dementia and hopefully share some caregiver stories along the way. My name is Kimberly Scott, and I am a part-time caregiver to my mother, who at the age of 65 was diagnosed with early onset dementia. In 2019, I started Caregiver Stories podcast to educate, build awareness, most importantly, because I wanted to get people talking and having a tough conversation about what if your loved one is diagnosed, then what? What's the plan? I wish my mom and I had had that tough conversation before she was diagnosed. If you wanna share your story or have knowledge about dementia and wanna be a guest on Caregiver Stories podcast, please visit thatkimberly.com to sign up to be interviewed. And while you're there, You can pick the platform you prefer to listen to the podcast on, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Anchor, Google, YouTube, SoundCloud, and now Amazon Alexa. Hello and welcome my guest today, Mrs. Kate Hanley. Hi, Kate. Thank you for joining me. Good morning, Kimberly. I appreciate you taking the time and sharing your story with us. And Kimberly, I appreciate you taking the time and running these podcasts. There is so much out there that needs to be said and needs to be learned. And thank you for giving such to the disease of dementia and to our caregivers. Well, it's definitely something that I I wish I had had the resource in the very beginning seven years ago when I wouldn't have been wandering aimlessly. So I feel the more we could be talking about it, maybe the more others will not have to go through the same thing that I went through. So tell listeners a little bit about your background and how you came to be in the world of dementia. Good question. How did I come into the world of dementia? (laughs) Unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So Kimberly, I'm a daughter. I'm a mom, Mm -hmm. two sons, and I'm a wife, I'm a sister, and I'm a friend. And my mom was diagnosed with dementia long before any of us saw it, but my father saw it. Mm -hmm. So I stepped up to help him in his journey with her. And that's how I got into this interest in offering hope to people that are caregivers, Kimberly, because it's such a lonely and frustrating and really painful experience. And we know those stories. Mm -hmm. I came into writing a story because I believe, I know that what I saw can give caregivers hope. Yeah. And nobody's situation is the same. Mm -hmm. And I feel the peaks and the valleys for every caregiver is so different at different times. And they're constantly going through the seven or eight stages of caregiving grief. I didn't even know if that even existed, but there is such a thing. So good for you for sharing because it's definitely something that's needed. So when you discovered, or long before, like you said, did your dad come to you or did he kind of like smooth it over? Like, oh, you know, I got this. It's okay. Nothing's nothing's wrong. Oh, most certainly. The pride uh-huh. of their marriage, the pride of him as a husband Mm -hmm. The pride of him as a protector, Kimberly, he absolutely kept us out. He Mm. would call and say, you know, I'm worried about your mother. Okay, well, you know, and then he would go into, I'm trying to do this. She doesn't care for herself. Different stories like that. And quite honestly, I think all seven of us, there are seven in my family, seven children. Wow. I think that we listen to that story to say, you know, gee whiz, leave her alone. She's had seven kids. (laughs) <laughs> exhausted. Yeah. Um, and we didn't really listen in depth to his story yet. Yet, Kimberly, as we tried to help, he would push back. I've got this. The Irish pride in him, mm-hmm. such a stoic, proud man. Mm-hmm. No one was going to help him with his wife because for 64 years he had cared for her and oh. he could continue. Yeah. to care for her, regardless of his own health issues. Mm. Wow. So when did he finally say he needed a little bit of help? How he long after? Kimberly, he didn't. Oh. We pretty much had to take control uh-huh. and say, we need to do this. His health was failing miserably. Oh. He was in really rough shape physically, but was not about to ask for help coming in, mm-hmm. ask for help from us. Mm-hmm 
And so as her dementia continued in its progression, we all recognized what we didn't want to face, which was that she was in need of assisted living, and so was he. Mm -hmm. And so we took it upon ourselves, Kimberly, to enter this battle, which is what I really called it. I think that my father looked at this as a battle. Yeah. He was a veteran. This was a battle for him, and he was not going to lose. Yeah. Wow. So what kinds of dementia were they diagnosed with? It was just my mom, and okay. hers was vascular. Okay. And so she had a series of TIA strokes that we didn't know, Kimberly. We didn't know she was having strokes. Yeah. And as my story tells, I took my mom and my dad, my dad being the caregiver for my mom at that time, mm -hmm. and into a neuropsychologist, geriatric neuropsychologist, as we all do when we recognize there's dementia. And actually started to learn what he was feeling and witness her inability to remember. Her mind was shutting down Kimberly and his heart and his passion wow. for caring for her was increasing. Yeah. He took this on as the disease of a lifetime yeah. and it was. Do you think it made him sick? Or was it just age that he was declining from? Or was no, he, he had been quite ill, Kimberly. Okay. He had multiple heart issues. Okay. He had a fractured back from, and never went into the hospital mm -hmm. to go for the spinal surgery. He wouldn't leave her. He would yeah. not leave her for a moment. He wouldn't wow. leave her. So how did you start, you know, stepping in? like to get assistance and move them into a facility, if that's what you did. So I was very fortunate, Kimberly, and yes, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. In our hometown, my husband was very involved in our local caregiving center, okay. uh, skilled nursing and assisted nursing, mm -hmm. uh, assisted living. And so we basically showed up one day and said, we're moving you. Wow. And there was almost a look of surrender. Mm -hmm. I think he knew Kimberly, but what I didn't know, which is interesting, is that he had already left his mark with her. Mm -hmm. He had already done what he thought would help in his battle against the disease, Kimberly. And as my story continues, what we found is that when we had moved him to an assisted living center mm -hmm. and left everything in their home, everything, beautiful home that had raised seven children, farmhouse, gorgeous setting. And when we moved them, we left everything, as I said. Mm -hmm. And so they arrived at the assisted living center. And that's pretty much where my story begins. What happened from there? Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, not to be a spoiler, but my parents arrived in our assisted living facility right around the corner from my home. Mm -hmm. And my father stayed one night before he passed. Oh. So his sense wow. of surrender was that he knew. I think he accepted his own shortcoming in that he thought, he didn't know, he didn't live through knowing that yeah. he had helped her. Yeah. My mom was happy, Kimberly. Mm -hmm. Unlike many others that have dementia, my mom was happy, spirited, filled with life. Mm -hmm. He just didn't know who we were. She was perfectly ambulatory, physically fine, but her mind was gone. And my father experienced that as her dementia set in. Mm -hmm. So what he did, Kimberly, what makes this story so unique and what offers hope and what I saw is that he wrote her when he started to recognize that dementia was setting in every morning at breakfast, he wrote her poetry on a breakfast napkin. Oh. In a, black, chills. <laughs> in a black Sharpie on just a natural paper napkin, Kimberly, he wrote her poetry. And when he was with me and he was failing and ailing and, and just a mess, he told me about this poetry. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, I wrote this. Someday I wonder if it will make a difference. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I had forgotten about it because I was so preoccupied with caring for my mom caring for my dad who passed. Yeah. That when I discovered this cachet of napkins and poetry in my family's home, after we went to clear everything out, after my father had died mm -hmm. and my mom had stayed at the assisted living 
-hmm. And then consequently, I'd moved her into a dementia setting. Mm -hmm. I found the napkins and really it took my heart away. And as you say, it gives you chills. Let me tell you as a daughter, oh, yes. sometimes as children, we don't recognize or witness their love. We see yes. them as a mom and a dad, not as people who love each other, yeah. not as a romance. Yeah. And to actually look physically at how he tried mm -hmm. to combat this disease was really earth shaking. Oh yeah. So I took the napkins, Kimberly. Yes. And I brought the napkins with me mm -hmm. and brought them back to my home and left them. They just yeah. sat. Months, Kimberly, before my mom passed, the dementia center called me up. And at that time, Kimberly, I had an answering machine. Those days were <laughs> over, right? We all yeah. have cell phones. Yeah. But I was raising my two sons, helping my oldest, my firstborn, uh -huh. into college. Uh -huh. Wrapped up in so many different things, but my big focus was caring for my mom. On the answering machine was a message from the caregivers at the dementia, and I really, this is a word I hate, mm -hmm. facility, mm -hmm. so I call it a home, mm -hmm. dementia home, that said, Kate, we're worried about your mom. We've noticed that she stopped eating breakfast. Mm. What we'd like to do is let her sleep through breakfast, because often those with dementia, their circadian rhythm goes off, and their timing is off. Mm -hmm. So if we let her sleep through, we think that this will be better because all she does is sit at the breakfast table and fidget with her napkin like she's looking for something. Mm. A poem. <laughs> and so yeah. I took the baggie of napkins that I had found, a baggie they kept them in Kimberly, simple. Yeah. They kept every one of them. Drove over to the dementia center, put them in a photo book, you know, a memory book they call it. Mm -hmm sat down with her, and immediately she looked at them, looked at me, and it was the answer. Kimberly, she smiled, she giggled, she was always happy. Her yeah. feet wiggled on the seat like she was on a children's playground. Yeah. Just happiness came back, not a loss, but amazing. And the caregivers looked at me in awe and said, this is called memory in the soul. Mm. our mind will stop that stops mm -hmm. but it's the memories that we create and the heartbeat continues and it matters Kimberly yeah. my father actually did it he won yeah. he yeah. won and I stood there Kimberly and I remember saying way to go dad <laughs> are you kidding she's happy yeah. And we were thrilled. And every morning and every night and every luncheon, no matter where we were, we had the napkins with her and her soul ignited. It's a remarkable story to say that dementia is mean. Mm -hmm. I suffered. We went yeah. through pain, all seven of us. We really mourned the loss of my mom before she passed. But what we also recognized is that my dad won the battle. Dementia yeah. didn't win. So in my book, as I talk about it, I say, take that dementia. Mm -hmm. You can steal, you can take away the mind, but we're given a soul and a heart for a reason. Oh yeah, and absolutely. 100%, my mom laughs about things and some of the things that she remembers and says on one of her birthdays. We had dinner at P.F. Chang's or something and then some friends came of mine and that she'd known for a long time was talking to him like no time had passed. And then as we're driving off, even though she would have to ask some questions and repeat herself because, you know, that's when they could really pick up. But as we were driving, she just said, you know, it was a great day and I have no regrets. She just like constantly says, I have no regrets, like in her heart, you know, cause she knows that she's got this diagnosis and like it just ran him out of the blue from that day forward, she constantly just will say, no, I have no regrets. I have no regrets. I have no mm -hmm. regrets. And she laughs, you know, I try to keep her laughing as much as humanly possible, mm -hmm. but there are just things that it is her heart and her soul. You know, she gets frustrated with where things are at that she can't find, or when she gets confused, she gets angry. But the minute I can make her laugh, yes, that, absolutely. So how long did your mom stay in the dementia home? She lived without my father for two mm -hmm. years. Okay. 
Wow. So, yeah. And again, it was right around the corner from my home. So my boys and I and my husband and my seven brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. everyone would visit her. Everyone. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. We were lucky. What advice would you give to folks that are just starting in that caregiving role or just discovered that their loved one was diagnosed with some form of dementia? That's the million dollar question, <laughs> right, Kimberly? The million dollar question and the answer is that there is no cure. So to be in the moment, yeah. and the moment is hard. Mm -hmm. The moment is hard. And in the times that I was frustrated, Kimberly, I sought my sons. Mm -hmm. I needed to be with someone who loved me. I needed to be a mom and remember that my mom, her starring role was being our mom and being yeah. a wife. That's what she was. That was her identity. And I share that mm -hmm. as a wife and a mom. And so I needed to be with my sons and they actually learned so much from this whole experience. Good. Uh, it is good. It was that there is a reason there's a time and a place as you and I talked and a purpose for everything. And I was not expecting any of this at yeah. all. Yeah. We Need never are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It just wasn't a topic that I feel, mm. well, my mom's parents didn't talk to her about. So of course, she didn't talk to us about it. And the only reason my dad's talking to me about it is because, well, they're divorced and he sees what I'm going through, you know, with my mom. So he tries to be a little bit more forthcoming on stuff that he probably wouldn't have if he didn't see me having to figure out as I go, you know, just the ups and the downs of the trips when I do go, because I'm part-time, I go to El Paso once a month to just relieve her caregiver that's there now it took me two years to find somebody that could keep up with her because she's right. you know, likes to go she barely stopped driving you know obviously it was the doctor's orders but you know we just we hide the keys that's the only way we can keep from her not trying to get in the car but yeah it is a tough battle that most parents didn't have the conversations with their children and we need to we need to be having that conversation about the what if we can't take care of ourselves. So what is one thing, or I'm sure there's a lot more than just one thing you would want to, I know you said that there's no cure, which I do know that. That's why I was more about trying to help the caregivers. Then there's plenty of people raising money for the cure or the cause, but what is one thing you want people to know when it comes to dementia or those with dementia? Show up, <laughs> be in the moment, Kimberly. And I promise you, I witnessed it myself, Kimberly. Yeah. There is a memory there. If, in fact, your loved one doesn't know who you are, mm -hmm. they can't say it because it's in their mind. But their heart knows it. Their soul yeah. knows it. There's a purpose behind their smile. Mm -hmm. 100%. There I agree. Is, there, there is hope. There is hope. Yeah. Yeah. You had put in your notes and one of the questionnaires, you know, that I thought that was a very sweet sentence, that there is memory in the soul. And it definitely talking to you about that and just thinking of the things that my mom just randomly says out of the blue. It's like, wow, that's absolutely true. Her <laughs> memory is in her soul for sure. And you know, Kimberly, her smile or her opportunities for happiness. Mm -hmm. My guess is that her starring role was being your mom. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Yeah. And that, you can't take that away. 10 months we share in the womb with our mom, mm -hmm. biological or not, you still yeah. go through all those feelings of new birth. Yeah. We're not going to forget that. Yeah, absolutely. And she's definitely, I think that was the hardest part for me in being the child that wanted to take this on, she was the one who decided on things. She was the one that managed everybody. So for her to be able to not totally give it up, but for the most part, that's very difficult. So I had to find the kindness and the way to go about doing it without getting into a fight with her or argument because it's not worth her time here to do that. I definitely had to learn that very quickly, that not to argue, just to agree or redirect and move on because otherwise we'd be fighting all the time and it's not worth being on this planet with her and not enjoying the time I have right now with her. It's that frustration you're addressing. Yeah. And yes, yes. 100%.
What is something that surprised you about being a caregiver? That I did it. <laughs> Honestly. Really? That, it, because now it's seven years, Kimberly, since mm -hmm. my mom passed and nine years since my father passed. And that everything we did, it was a hornet's nest. Mm -hmm. And we survived. And so did she. Mm -hmm. And I actually feel that being able to witness that what my father did beat the disease at its own game. Mm -hmm. Memory in the soul is important. Mm -hmm. And the words to someone to say, never forget that are really empowering. Mm -hmm. And so I learned about myself that I was in the moment, I was present as frustrated and painful as it was. And that for my own caregiving, what I needed to do was be loved. Mm -hmm. And so turning to people that loved me. Mm -hmm. Outside activities or outside pleasures of a funny movie or a, a talk with my niece and my nephews definitely help or with my boyfriend or just anything mm -hmm. to make me laugh, you know, refills my heart, my soul to be able to get back up and do it again the next day you know, have the conversation to know that that's why I was put on this earth. You know, she gave birth to me and now it's my duty to make sure that she, you know, lives the rest of her life in a comfortable manner to the best that I can provide because I know that it won't be as comfortable towards the end because of the body shutting down. But all I can do is control what I have control over within her little box, you know, area if you will. So tell us a little bit about your book and, you know, where people can, can get it and find well, it. Thank you, Kimberly. So my book is published and available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. My website where anyone can reach me, I'm happy to talk, is www.breakfastmemories.com. And there you can find where I'm speaking, book signings, and I'm just happy to share stories, listen to stories, my book has its own Facebook page, Breakfast okay. Memories, Facebook. And again, there is where I would have different stories, updates on any dementia research, mm -hmm. updates on stories, mm -hmm. updates on new places that have opened up that are doing different things, music therapy, things like that. And so many places now, Kimberly, are really recognizing that the strength of the caregiver mm -hmm. offers the strength of the one that is demented more memory in their soul, however strong we are. And it's a boatload of work. Yeah, it's not easy. Absolutely. It takes a village to keep the caregivers mind, body, and soul going. And it takes that same village to be able to keep your loved one that has dementia going. It's, nobody's is the same. And no day is the same. And some days it's good and some days it's bad. And they're both not easy. Even when on the good days, it's not easy because... You're remembering old things, you know, that you want it to be a different way, but it is what it is, you know. So I do really appreciate you, Kate. I appreciate you sharing your story today. It was so sweet to hear of the, the poems and I can't wait to read it. And to the listeners out there, thank you for listening. And if you know somebody who needs to hear Kate's story, please send this episode to them. And while you're there listening or choosing which platform to listen to the podcast on, please rate that podcast when you can. And to all the caregivers out there, please take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. And in the words of my friend, Dottie Gandhi, you have my undying love, gratitude, and admiration. But most importantly, those who have not had the conversation with your loved ones about the what if, please start having that tough conversation with your loved ones about what if you can no longer take care of yourself and what that plan would be. So until next week, thank you, Kate. I appreciate you. Thank you.